This is a podcast from Torvine Voluntary Alliance. Hello, I'm Patrick Downs. Welcome to Word from the Third, where we'll be taking a look at all the big stories and news from the third sector here in Torvine. So, one word for the third today. I'm in, I think it's probably best to call it a little nugget of a gem in Torvine that is Pantic House. And to tell us more about Pantic House, a bit of the history and what it does at the moment within the borough is Alan, Alan Peplow. Tell me a little bit about the history of, of this place here, Pantic House. This, uh, this, this particular building is really covered in history, shall I put it that way. Uh, built in 1873, taken over by a chap called Isaac Butler, who uh, was a partner in the steelworks and then became to own the steelworks down at the bottom of Griffithstown. Uh, and incidentally, perhaps a lot of people don't know that Griffithstown was the first place in the world to perfect the rolling of stainless steel. Uh, but Isaac Butler had another sister plant up in Sheffield and transferred the process up there because he had more rollers. Uh, so that's, in essence, where the world-famous she- she- Sheffield, Sheffield stainless steel Sheffield stainless steel comes from, from. but then yeah. it actually came it from... It actually originated right in, in Griffithstown itself. So uh, the house uh, oversees the what was left of the, uh, the, the steelworks down there. The grounds cover 14 acres and that comprises of an archery uh, area where we have uh, four uh, Olympic uh, standard archers and uh, the, we do the selections here as well for the, the games, the uh, Commonwealth and things like that, mm-hmm. the selections for the Welsh team. We have uh, uh, four football teams, that's the juniors through to seniors. We have a, a cricket team and perhaps unknown to some, we can reveal this now, Back in 2019-20, uh, the uh, uh, World Cricket Games were being played in South Africa, but the COVID there was um, very high, so the English Cricket Board pulled it. Uh, but in the August of that year, they approached us because we had the lowest rate of COVID in Torvine, and we had the highest spec cricket pitch. So over three days, we ran the uh, the uh, cricket. World International Tri Nations. And we had uh, 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 the over 50s, the I- India, England, and Wales played over three days here. So, but it was a shut gate and nobody could know about it. But so, a lot of people say there's a, there's a wall surrounding Pandic House, uh, and behind it is one of the biggest kept secrets we have in the valley. <laughs> um, it brings a smile. It brings a smile. But uh, it is a gem, as as was mentioned just now. Uh, the history of the house itself, it lent itself to being a refugee camp for Belgian refugees during the First World War um, and also housed troops coming back from the continent um, as part of the recovery process for the, uh, 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 the recovery from the, the, from the injuries they suffered. Um, it uh, uh, transferred it, or to transpire then to become a hospital uh, for returning troops along with the Belgian refugees and indeed we've had someone from the uh, registered with the uh, the uh, Welsh Museum come up here with their uh, metal detectors and picked up some absolute cracking gems from down in the meadow where they used to put the troops down there, the Belgian troops and one of them is a brooch with um, uh, stones within the brooch, sparkly stones and it uh, transpires that that was made in Czechoslovakia and brought over by a Belgian soldier as a keepsake for his um, loved one that he left back in Belgium. But uh, unfortunately dropped it in the meadow, along with a lot of other artifacts that we found down in the meadow itself. But later on, it became uh, the drawing offices, indeed, uh, after the Second World War, the drawing offices for the um, design and build of ICI fibres. And this was uh, taken over, and there were draftsmen, draftswomen here uh, that, uh, well, cited themselves here as the offices to build, to build the um, uh, the ICI, and those designed and built, or designed from here. Uh, as I mentioned, Second World War again become an auxiliary hospital for the hospital across on uh, Coyle Creek Road. So that's a little bit about the uh, the history uh, of of Pantagos in essence. Um, Isaac Butler was the first chap industrialist uh, to actually employ a doctor to look after his um, workforce. 
and uh, that looking after extended to the families as well. And this is pre-National Health Service, so he was quite innovative in supporting his, uh, his, his, his people down there. And he called it, he called this place uh, a wellness, uh, a wellness building for the support of the employees. When he put it into the wellness building and, and, and moved out and gave this over to supporting the employees, put the sports sections in to keep them fit, and uh, that was a hundred years ago, last August the 20th, the anniversary of him passing this over to the upkeep and the well-being of, of uh, or the wellness, as he put it, of, of um, his employees. It was an employees club for the steelworks, and then gradually the, uh, the place uh, needed a lot of upkeep, needed a lot of help, needed a lot of support and monies put into it. But um, as, we, as we know, the only funding that was coming in from us, for us at that time, going back you know, 20 years, was what came over the bar. Uh, so consequently, not much got done to the building itself because it was sort of scraping by at the time, bearing in mind that not too long ago, the steelworks had shut down itself, so a lot of the members uh, who were in the steelworks and all the different sports sections that the steelworks had sort of dis disappeared and spread back around, out around the valleys. The building then itself, uh, I became secretary around about eight years ago, and I had three, three, three st uh, statements of intent, shall I put it that way, for the building. Uh, because uh, I was asked to become secretary, and I said, "Well, I'll become secretary on the on these grounds. First of all, make it um, everything here is, uh, from the safeguarding point legal to support everybody that comes in here. The second point that it's open to anybody in the community, wherever they are from, whatever they do, uh, uh, and everybody's got a right to come in through the gates. And the third one is that um, to aspire to become a community hub." and something that focuses on the well-being and health of the people in the community. That was accepted, and our strategy and plan went into place, and it's gone into uh, a community trust. Uh, nothing can be built on here, across here. It can't be sold. If it ever folded, all the assets would go back into all the charities in the area. So there's a totally non-for-profit organization. We just want to uh, open up and build this as a, as a, as a, as a community hub. On, and on that third point, the community hub, we have, uh, you know, uh, uh, perhaps a bit later, I'll tell you who we involve ourselves with. Going back a hundred years, this building was created as, as a wellness hub. A hundred years later, we've had a global pandemic and wellness, well-being has come back to the forefront again. Tell me a little bit more about what Pandic House has done in the last two years. Well, what we've done in the last two years, we, uh, we did um, with, uh, <coughs> I have to say, a lot of help from uh, the council. The council is our local council is in Griffiston. We fought long and hard over a number of years, putting applications in for grants and for funding to actually build a wellness centre on the disused tennis courts out there. It would be one room, all the plans are in place, all the drawings are in place. The button was ready to be pressed, we'd got everything in place, and then one of the companies came back and said, Brexit have hit, can we just recost this? And unfortunately, the cost went up uh, another half a million pounds. So, but that was, that was pulled because of Brexit. Now, I have to say though, that the lottery, we, we said to the lottery, look, we're not gonna stand another winter with the roof. It's leaking and uh, you know terrible waters coming in and ruining what we've got here. And they've released money for us to put a new roof on. And we had the last survey yesterday uh, to uh, just check the actual strength of the timbers because we just need to um, uh, reshape the roof a little bit. Not putting in any bigger, but just um, to stop the, the, the sort of recess hole in the middle of the roof and lift that up. So hopefully within eight weeks, we'll see some scaffold going around and we'll have a new roof. We've also costed the heating systems in here as well. Uh, there'll be three separate heating systems because uh, as it runs at the moment, we've got a, a boiler down in the cellar, which was put in somewhere around 1940 and it came from the steelworks. So you can imagine how efficient a gas boiler from the 1940s are. Mm. Down there. And then it was either on or off. And our energy bills per month um, run about 2,300 
just for the energy bills in this place. That's with it shut as well because it's a standing order. Anyway, we're striving on, we're striving on, uh, striving for to become a, a, a true community hub. Um, we have uh, as well uh, moved on a bit after buying the house. We had um, uh, the school free meals when the COVID hit. And we did those through here, but logistically it was quite difficult for families to come down. Um, so that was uh, moved, moved elsewhere, but we continued as a, as a food bank. And uh, uh, within Torvine, we work in a very strong partnership with Lewin, uh, the tin on the wall over there, Park Banteg, Griffith Town itself, and the new estates over on the canal. They, uh, they bring regular regular donations to us, and that's, um, that's something that sustains us and keeps us going. Along with that in the food bank, we have, uh, we have uh, a weekly, um, a weekly uh, delivery here uh, of, uh, I think, just over a tonne of food. And that's, uh, again, paid for through the, the help and support of uh, Norma, uh, Anthony and Dave and that's then distributed this is a distribution point for the 10 food banks in Torvine uh, so all the food banks come here on a Wednesday and pick up the uh, the foods to take back to their own food bank so it's a uh, it's quite a busy place on a Wednesday we've got big delivery days on there the future we have uh, totted it up this morning that we are uh, interacting with and that's supporting organizations from outside and also supporting organizations inside the building we're at, uh, interacting with 60 organizations in the community organizations and that's uh, from hope gb to adult mental health support uh, we have a group in there bron adam family hub um, uh, at the moment we also cover a lot for people who are creative um, we've got a, uh, the phoenix arts committee here and we've always had a, uh, a place, because it's always a, it's a good place for well-being of the community, the music and, and, and creativity. And we have, um, to that effect, quite a bit of music that goes on on a Monday. We host, uh, and have been for a number of years, Torvine Male Choir. Uh, and also this evening, Torvine Male Choir come in. So if any of you budding singers, no matter how old you are, want to come in and... Uh, uh, join the male choir um, you're very welcome to come along and have a listen very nice it is too we also have Appalachian music live Appalachian music on a Monday and Appalachian dance so if you fancy coming in uh, get, keeping fit by dance or come along and play music uh, in the Appalachian band then bring your guitars along and have a, have a little play along with that or just go and sit just have a glass of pop and you know, sit with them and have a listen so the question, I suppose, really, uh, I ask it so of of everybody really on the podcast: if I could grant one wish for Pantech House, what would that be? To become, uh, <clears throat> to become a place that everybody feels comfortable in. When they come here, everyone has a friend, and everyone can count on the support of others. And to use these facilities to the best use for the needs of the community. That's 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 what I'm striving for. If people want to get in touch, how can they? Uh, we have a Facebook page, and everything, the activities that's going on uh, within Facebook in here, um, or phone up. You can go on Facebook, I should say, and have a look at that. Um, there's also, if you want to. Uh, popped into Pandic House, a number of boards that what's on this week and things like that. Um, as I mentioned, during the uh, during the week and the weekends, we have um, lots of activities going on for children. Like Saturday morning, we've got uh, music tots. It's called. So instead of just shaking a rattle, uh, they actually play a rattle as a maraca and play along with the music. And these babies in that baby in the arms up to three years of age there. So um, and we run a quiz. We have a crochet group here, uh, so yeah, we have a, a num I won't I won't read them all, <laughs> but uh, we have a a, a lot of number a, a lot of organisations that come in. People come here and they uh, say, "Can I be a member?" I've heard about this place. Can I be a member? I said, "Well, there is one little step before becoming a member, 
become a friend, a friend with everybody here. You be their friend, and then that will allow you to become a member. So, uh, yeah, fine, actually. So, a lot of people say when they come in, the atmosphere is fantastic. It's a lovely, warm, welcoming place. And uh, I don't think there's anybody that comes in here in any group that, um, uh, you know, we're not working as a big family in the, in the, in the, in the, in the community. And I think that's, I think that's the crux of, crux of community, all working together to support each other uh, in difficult times and non-difficult times, because you, once your well-being's up there, you feel great and you 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 you, you, you do more for yourself and uh, feel more positive. But to just to continue to support each other, look after each other, and that's what we're striving to do here. We're striving to do, and as I mentioned at the start, these the gates are open for everybody. You don't have to be a member to come here, but uh, there is a membership starts at two fifty. And what that does is help us and uh, the team that look for funding support to say to the funders, yeah, well, we've got X amount of members, so you know it does raise our profile a bit from the funding aspect. If you have more members, um, and then uh, they realise how many people you're actually supporting. Um, so, yeah, and with the food bank, uh, uh, the food bank has been running around two years, and we. Uh, we know personally now all the families that we are we are helping. <clears throat> we also uh, were, were the central food bank for the Syrian refugees that came in, and we still continue to support those. And indeed, a number of the the Syrian families come here to, to partake in our activities. So um, it's 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 great for integrating people truly into our community. That's a, that's a great base for that. We also, uh, from the point of view of the, uh, of the well-being, we have uh, 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 activities on the weekend, <coughs> a number of weekends through the summer, which are called Family Days. And this is a, and this is a family from baby arms right up to granddad and grandma. Uh, come in here, picnic, a bit of music going on, we do nature hunts for the family and in, try and involve all the families in the activities there. So as a family, the family builds its unit as well as uh, individuals enjoying themselves. You know. And that, uh, that went down really well. And about, well, it was about four years ago, um, we were a bit overwhelmed because I think in the region of 2,800 people turned up on one family weekend. And the meadow and the grasses and the, everything was <laughs> picnic blankets out there with the grandma and granddad. And um, the other thing that I'd like to think is uh, that this is a safe place for children to play as well. Uh, there's very limited space for people to have a run around and, for, you know, climb on a log and have a bit of fun. Um, and this is a space where uh, you know children run in the meadow and. Uh, tire themselves out so you parents out there when they are tired when they go home they go straight to sleep <laughs> and you can sit up there and have the telly control to yourself no it's um it is it's great it's a lovely field here and as i mentioned earlier on everybody's welcome everybody's welcome here and indeed we we uh, uh we're friends with everyone it's a nice and warm and welcoming and i'd love to see you all if you'd like to come down and support us in any way I have to say as well, uh, a number of other organisations that support us really well. Uh, Sabrina down at the uh, Lanraven Church, uh, she's given us great support. We've had uh, uh, good support from the co-op in Griff as well. Uh, support from Aldi's and Lidl's. They uh, pop bits and things up here now and again. And also Unilever. Uh, over the valleys, the uh, pot noodles, mm. if they're a little bit underweight or overweight, uh, obviously they can't pour them back into the tank and uh, pour them back out again, so they, they bring them here. So um, we slowly become the pot noodle capital of Torvine in this place, because <laughs> they bring around about four, five hundred pots at time. But, um, but there we are, anyway. Uh, so there's a lot of people out there <clears throat> that are supporting us. And a lot of people out there that we support, and I think that's uh, that's the balance. That's the balance, and that's the future for Griffithstown. It's the future for Torvine, and it, hopefully the balance of uh, friendship would be the uh, the basis for the rest of you know rest of Britain, rest of the world, perhaps. There we go. Alan, uh, thanks for talking to me today. 
a pleasure. Lovely to see you, Patrick. Brought a son with you today as well. I know. It's great, yeah. And don't forget, if you want to contact TVA, Torvine Voluntary Alliance, for anything regarding the third sector here in Torvine, get in touch regarding funding, volunteering, any kind of support or governance. Info at tvawales.org.uk. You can also find us on social media, on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at TVA Wales, or of course on the website. It's all there at tvawales.org.uk. This podcast is produced by TVA, Torvine Voluntary Alliance.